Hey everybody, it's me, Mitch. This is a short video. Maybe, even though it might not seem so at first, one of the most important messages I have ever put out. And I hope that it serves, and I think this is lofty, but I hope that it serves as a warning to mankind about the distinct and very real possibilities of what might happen to us, the human race, if we continue down the path of this dietary lunacy that we're currently on. I ask that you just watch this through to the end. It's not long. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago, living things on this planet split into two kingdoms, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. There are distinct differences in the cellular composition and makeup between these two different, what we call kingdoms. But since both kingdoms came from a common ancestor, a lot of cellular biology is common with only small differences accounting for the wild and incredible differences in the way members of each of these kingdoms operates and reacts to the nourishment it uses to both grow, energize, and rebuild itself. It took a long time, an unimaginable amount of time for us to become what we are today, one molecular change at a time over hundreds and even billions of years. There are differences, profound differences in generations that have come from previous generations and even small changes in one gene in the DNA can determine wildly different outcomes and the genetic difference between plants and between humans is profound after the hundreds of millions of years since we split from that common ancestor. This is about logic. This is about what we're built of. It's a fact that most animals are carnivorous and have evolved eating other animals and have turned to eating plants only in times of food shortages as a tide over. Fortunately, in our ancestry, those periods of time didn't last long enough to change the evolutionary path of the organism, which has happened and accounts for this thing we call adaption. That's why some animals are herbivores they were forced at some point in their evolution to maintain themselves on an unnatural diet. And those mechanisms, like the ability to have large hind guts and ferment these things that are not food for animals and turn them into the fatty acids that the animals can use but a lot of species of their ancestors had to go extinct before something finally worked. Well, 
It's a scary thought, and it's a realistic thought, but it's a thought that it seems like the entirety of the human race is missing. The old saying, you are what you eat. According to one of my viewers, should actually be eat what you are. I love it. My thanks for that. What a great thought. Eat what you are. And what we are is animal, not plant. The differences in the molecular structure of the cells and the hormones and the sterols is different enough to wildly affect the outcome of the final organism. And that's why plants and animals do not look like they have anything in common, even though they do. Eat what you are is obvious. If you need animal building materials, animal fats, you can only get them from eating animals, not the plant equivalents. And if we continue to go down this road, following a path that we know comes out of abject corruption, religious cult influence, anything but science, propaganda, and we keep feeding this human animal, plants, eventually one of two things will happen. Either the human race will go extinct, which is I think the most likely event, or a long time from now, some offspring of some offspring, their chemistry will somehow adapt to a diet with no animal products, the ultimate vegan result, who will then be what they eat. So to wrap this up, let me introduce you to what may become your great, great, great to the 50,000th power grandchild at some faraway distant time in the future. Meet the last species, the last descendant of Homo erectus. Meet Homo Adventus. Thank you, Ellen White. Take the rest of the day off. And for God's sakes, eat meat. 